Hi, I'm Tony Todd, and welcome to Throwing Heat. I'm here with my two co-hosts, Dr. Dan Ratner and Ross DeBoss. Today's guest is by far one of the premier collegiate baseball players in the country. He attends Stanford University. Let's welcome to the show my buddy, Mr. Drew Bowser's in the house. What's up, Drew? What's up? How's it going? It's your world, man. We're just living in it, Drew. We're just living in it. Thank you guys for having me. Oh, of course, of course. It won't be the only time, hopefully, you know. Um, so we tend to go way back in your career and um you know, you started playing baseball at what a mere age of maybe seven, maybe? Actually five, yeah. Five. five. Okay, T-ball. great. T ball. So you played little league, correct? Yep. Yep. But, mm-hmm. but then again, you were on a travel ball team at the age of nine. Yeah. Is that is that true? Yeah, I started off with the uh Mid Valley Warriors with Thomas and Lucas and a couple other guys and yep. you know, four friendships through there, and then now I'm here. So, Drew, we have a photo of you back in the day with one of your teammates, Thomas McCaffrey, playing for the uh, Mid-Valley Warriors. Yeah, that's awesome. Super cool. Love Thomas. And, and we, yeah, he's a great, great, great guy. And we also have another photo of the two of you. you you're at Stanford University, and he's the catcher for UC Irvine. Yeah. Tell us about that, was, that experience. Yeah, that was, uh, that was earlier in the year. We played him in a – Four game series, I think. Yeah, four games, and then uh, we played them later on in the regional. Unfortunately, we had this, we send them home, but you know it's just how it goes. But they, I mean, the, you still have the same friendship, even though you exactly. send them home, right? I actually just saw him like two days ago. <laughs> Meanwhile, you crying. you outgrew him by several inches. There, are you still growing? No, I'm actually done. I'm done. All right, you're six four though. You're a big guy. You're not like a you're you're, <laughs> you're not a small dude like some. Some people we know. No, six four, about two fifteen, two twenty. Well, and, and, and you guys, you know what I love about Drew? Drew is he is the most humblest guy that I know. I mean, I was at the perfect game, All American game in two thousand nineteen. Now this has not been done. I think the last person to do it was uh, Francisco Lindor. My man, he's playing with the best talent in the country. In the country. My man wins the home run derby and he wins the MVP. That's incredible. Drew, how were you feeling after that? Come on. Tell that me. That was awesome. Man. I mean, you know, of course, I expected to go in there and have fun and whatever happens, happens. Just enjoy the experience. But, you know, having fun there and then adding on top of that with the home run derby and the MVP was just amazing. I think we have a photo of that that day as well. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. Game. That that's 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 some serious hardware. If I had something like that, I would just minimize it just a little bit and just wear it around my lips all, all day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, still, it's still downstairs in our house in our living room. The two. Oh, chairs. you have it in the living room? Yeah. Yeah. It's oh. Yeah, Drew, cool. I want to I want to ask you a question. I, I feel like I've just got to ask this because I'm just out of curiosity. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> when you're a young phenom like you. Do do people in your position, do they usually look to the future at all? Or do you kind of say, no, 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 I'm just going to keep it where it is. I got to just keep making progress. Do you stay kind of in the moment or do you ever drift out and think, maybe I'm going to, you know, make make the big leagues and be a, a huge impact on them? Yeah, I think uh, I've always thought about the big leagues, of course. I mean, it's always been a dream of mine since I was a kid. Um, so in regards to that, I can't, you know, not think into the future just a little bit but usually i'm someone who tends to just stay in the moment and go about my work and focus on what's going on right now and, and how compli- how complicated was it for you to turn down major league baseball to you know attend stanford university um i'm gonna be honest it wasn't it wasn't that complicated uh really it wasn't that all the money and you're, you were you predicted to go in the first round you know that correct i mean you weren't going to be drafted in the 67th round uh, you were right. going to be a first round pick. I mean, probably top five, I imagine. Right, Tony? I, what I've seen, I mean, I, I feel he's one of the best baseball players in the country. So, he's, so he's, do, he's tell us how the course. conversation went in your household. I'm curious to see what your, what all your family members said. I know your mom went to Stanford. I know, I know she wanted you to go to college and it's a good thing to go to college. I, my, both my kids go to, went to college or are in college right now, but I mean, coming from, 
a baseball player perspective and a dream of a baseball player is be drafted in the first round. I mean, it had to be a hard decision. I know you're saying it's not, but just, just tell us how the conversation went with your family. I'm curious. <laughs> Honestly, I'm being completely honest. Uh, That's fine. I yeah, really, want to be honest. It really wasn't. I mean, both of my parents, none of them were like pushing, you know, there's no other option. Like you have to go to school. They, they wanted to hear what I had to say and, you know, they wanted to do whatever I wanted to do. But honestly, you know, we entertained the draft. We talked to some teams, but the whole time, you know, we just kept having conversations and it was just like, I'm going to school. Like I want to go to school. That's great. To and I totally respect I you for to that. Yeah. No, you're going to one of the best schools in the country. You're not going to Santa Monica Junior College. You're going to Stanford <laughs> University, yeah. which was one of the best schools in the country. And, and and what's your major in school? What 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 are you studying? I'm so just I'm curious. Looking, uh, I'm looking into uh, STS at school. It's uh, Science, Technology, and Society. I have no um, idea what that is. <laughs> no idea what that <laughs> is. True. Kind of like the management and entrepreneurship. That's great. Uh, yeah, that kind of major, and then. Uh, Kind of focusing on communication and media stuff like great. that. Great. Yeah. So as you're as you're going through this this experience at Stanford, can you take us through a little bit of, of what what you're gaining from it? Because I know to make the big leagues you gotta keep working and working and working at it. What what are you picking up this year that you'd say is gonna help you? I would say just uh hmm. Yes, I stumped him. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot. I think it's just picking up how to be a good teammate, how to be a good leader. I think I had those qualities before, but of course, as levels go up, you got to improve those skills. Um, just improving my overall skills personally, um, you know, speed, power, uh, fielding. Um, just learning how to fit into a program, you know, being being new, um, kind of only having like half a year. Um, yeah under my belt and, you know, getting thrown into a lineup, I had to adjust to that pretty quickly, understand, you know, my role and what I can do. Um, and then just having that championship and winning mindset um, definitely helps. And I think a lot of the guys in our lineup this year had that, and that's why we made it so far. Now, that's a, that's a great answer, Drew. Now, I want to take you back to that 2020 Harvard-Westlake class. I mean, you guys were on a roll. You guys were rolling. I think you made – May were what, 10 games in before the, yeah. they called the season. Yeah. And, and I don't know, I think you were batting like maybe like 522 RBIs with like three right. jacks. I was like, this guy's going to like set like tons of records. And then next thing you know, no more games yeah. over, Party over. over. Yeah. And can you, can you just tell me about how special do you think that squad would have been? Because I was looking forward to that matchup with Notre Dame uh, and, and, and Lucas Gordon. I, yeah. And I just, and it just ended just like that. We would have won. <laughs> won. I love the confidence. We would have won. Yeah, yeah. It's not even a question. Right. Wow. Well, you know, you know, tell us who else was on your team. I mean, not mm -hmm. everybody knows how stacked your team really was, and it really was stacked. I mean, it was All unbelievable. Right, so tell us. We had me, uh, Pico Armstrong, ninth and, and 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 Pete's on some team. So he was drafted like first and he was on the Mets. Is that it? Yeah, he got drafted by the Mets. And then Are they still a the team? Guy. Yeah. Traded to the Cubs. Oh, he's traded to the Cubs. Yeah. For the hobby bias. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Tony told me not to ask you, but I'm going to ask you anyway because okay. I'm, I'm just curious. Before you, he was your teammate, you and Pete had some animosity. I don't know, that's a bad word to say. You guys were very competitive against each other um, like before Harvard Westlake days. Sure, right. false. yeah, we had. Uh, I mean, we played each other in Little League, and we always he played at uh, Sherman Oaks Little League, I played, right. you know, so that's kind of the big rivalry just because those are the top two teams, and it wasn't any like serious rivalry, bad blood, beef, or whatever. It was just fun. We're always playing each other in the championship, and <laughs> thank you. That's what I thought the answer would be, but you know, Ross always <laughs> like tends to like to go towards the negative. I'm the he likes positive to stir up guy. trouble. So, right. so yeah, he likes to like start trouble. So I like to keep it positive. So I'm gonna continue to keep it positive. So <laughs> just your 2020 class, just those seniors. How many of those guys are playing college baseball now? I mean, I, I know Thomas is at UC Irvine. Tyler Gannis is at Oregon. Uh, wow. Jack was his, uh, is it Hackett? Hassett. Hassett. Yeah. He's at NYU, correct? Yeah. And you have Sam Biller, 
Sam he's Bennett. also at he's at LMU. Am I missing yeah, something? Yeah, LMU. Yep, he was at Cal Poly and just went to LMU uh, over the summer. Wow. Um, um, the amazing thing is, people people watching this video now they may not know these names, but we're gonna look back at this in like five years and be like, what? Right. Yeah, you'll know them for sure. You will definitely know their names. Yeah. So, uh, where do you, where do you see yourself fitting in? in that in that group i i know to make it to make it big in this you have to have some swagger uh, somewhere in you. <laughs> right. do you feel like you're the top of my that class? group yeah my class 100 uh, that's what i like to hear <laughs> he's the best player on the field every time he plays the game that's just my opinion and i'm not wrong too often you that's know, true. I, he's, I, got, he's, he's, he's got, got a great track well. record yeah it'd be a great track record yeah. You've been doing unbelievable. So now the college kids used to play in like Alaska or Massachusetts during the summer. Did you play anywhere during the summer? Yeah, I played in Cape Cod. How was that league? I heard that's great. A great league. Yeah. It's the best. How was it? It was amazing. Really great experience. Got to meet a lot of really good players, new players. And you stayed at somebody's house, right? You stay at somebody's house. Yeah. Somebody, somebody. And how was that experience? Awesome. They, I they were them. great. I'll be, going, I'll be going back next year, and I already talked to them about staying at their house again. <laughs> really great people. That's great. And obviously, you did pretty well. I mean, who who else was it? Was it all college kids? That, who, I mean, like yeah. Dr. Dane Ratner couldn't play in that league if he wanted to? No. All no. <laughs> oh, okay. I wasn't One quite best, sure. Best arms, best hitters, and then a lot of guys that will, you know, be getting their names called pretty early next year in the draft. That's, That's great. Real. How did you feel about your transition from Harvard Westlake to Stanford, the competition wise? I mean, because I know you've been playing up so many levels since you were a little kid. Was it just they throw a little harder? I mean, because you're used to seeing, you know, guys that throw heat. Just tell right. me, tell me a little bit about that. Uh, I think now it's uh, you see guys throw harder, a little more consistently. I think in high school you would just run into those guys every couple weeks or you would only see them at like the events during the summer and now it's you know especially in the Pac-12 you're seeing good arms every single game you know guys are throwing harder more consistently guys have better breaking balls so I think it's just um it's not a huge adjustment but there's definitely an adjustment period you got to go through and especially for me you know having my last high school season cancel and then waiting around a lot of time and finally getting back into it just a couple weeks before season. Um, at first it was tough, but once I got settled in, it was just the same do, game I've always been playing. Do you now notice? You make, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, go Tony. Go, no, go down. Go down. Do you do you notice a different a different mindset among the players in college versus high school? I mean, I know they up their game just in terms of the actual game itself, but how about the mental game? I'm a therapist, so I gotta ask these questions. Right, mental game. You definitely gotta definitely gotta be mentally tough. Um, I, I just know from personal experience, um, if I wasn't able to, you know, move on to the next play or next at bat or just overall, just not let outside factors get to me during the game, like I wouldn't have had a chance. So definitely I think, you know, in college, you're playing in front of more people. You got to slow the game down and all that. See, Tony knows that you're going to make it from a baseball skills perspective, but I know you're going to make it from the mental perspective. You're <laughs> saying exactly what I'd want to be hearing. Thank that, you. It's really important to have that mental toughness, and I, I think it's great that you got there. I had a question about that. How did you get there? How did you get that mindset? Uh, I think it happened early on just for my parents. Um, you know, I, I will say during Little League, I was kind of one of the kids that was all emotional because I, I thought I was the best, so I was expecting every time, like, I better get a hit every single time. It better be a double or a home run. Like that's right. nothing wrong with that. And you know, I struggled with that early. And once I got older, and you know, the travel teams I played for, like my high school coaches, like started coaching them. And I'm like, there's no way I'm about to like show a bad attitude in front of my high school coaches. So at a certain age, I was at a certain age. I was like, all right, let me just flip the switch. Let me just not be so emotional okay. you got peer pressured into it that's good <laughs> peer pressure is not always good but in this yeah. case it was yeah, exactly well i'm glad you made that adjustment so t tell me um, i'm following listen guys i'm gonna keep going the mental route you know that i will so i wanted to know what what's the hardest thing mentally on the field for you 
Hmm. I stumped him again. <laughs> I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's hard, but just staying with the whole next play mindset. Um, that can be tough for some people, especially when you get to college. Um, you know, and you're playing on a bigger stage. Um, and also just being able to just slow the game down. I think I was really successful at that this year, especially because, you know, at Stanford, we couldn't play at full capacity. And even our regional was like 25% capacity. And then we won that. And it was like next weekend, we're going to Texas Tech in front of a sellout crowd. And they have full capacity. So just being able to slow the game down in my mind and realize that no matter where I play, it's just the same game. It really helps. Now, how was the transition, Drew, from shortstop to third base? Because I, I still feel you can play shortstop. And, right. You know. Um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't super hard. Um, I had played third every mm -hmm. once in a while, um, you know, during the summer and all that. Um, I think the biggest adjustment was just runners are faster and also it's a different angle and the ball mm -hmm. gets on you quicker. Come at you a little harder. So I think just the reaction time is definitely a big thing. Well, I think you can play any position on that field. You know, I, I wouldn't want to see you pitch, though. <laughs> just uh, I think you can play any position there. Yeah. So, so Drew, you're wearing the Dodger hat. You're in L.A. right now. You told us before you came on you were working out. Um, do you have like a like a major league, like the ex major league baseball player that takes you under their wing and and helps you with the swing and and it helps you with the mental aspects of the game. Is there anybody that, that kind of called you or that you hang out with that helps you with that kind of stuff? Yeah, I got a, I got a couple. I think the biggest one um, is Derek Lee. Sure. Yeah. Cubs, he lives, right? He lives out this way. And um, my Malibu, actually yeah. introduced us a couple of years back. And, you know, he's been, he's been a guy I can just go to whenever and talk about the game or meet up and get lunch or you know, like, let's go hit today or something like that. Um, and even his family is a really great family, and they become yeah. friends of ours over the years, and we really love them. His son is unbelievable. I've been, you know, uh, Derek and I have been friends for years, uh -huh. and I went to go see his son play at Malibu Little League, and yeah. it's it's not fair. He should not be able to play. <laughs> He's I mean, seriously, he can pitch on some high school. Drew, he can pitch on some high school teams right now. He's right. That how, wait, how old is he? 11. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's unbelievable, guys. I mean, 11 years old, and you you say you're going to already pitch in high school, which is unbelievable. And and so do, do you still work on your swing every day? I mean, to, to, you know, walk us through your workout. I'm just curious what you do every day. Uh, so every day, actually, so the trainers I have right now, I've had them since I was seven. Wow. So, honestly, at this point, it doesn't even feel like they're my trainers. It feels like they're like my uncles pretty much. Um, you know, every morning or every other morning or, you know, I swing a lot, but at some points, you know, in the off season, I don't, got, I don't have to swing every single day. Um, but, you know, we'll get up early. We'll start at 8, 7.38, hit, field, run. And then the place I go to has a little gym section, so I'll lift there. Or actually, I have my trainer, Josh Wright, down in Orange County, and I'll go there a couple times a week. I can make it down there and – do what I do there, and uh, that's pretty much it. And Drew, tell us about your experience playing for the USA baseball team. That's that's an unbelievable honor as well. Oh yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. That was my first time leaving the country. Um, best players in America. Some of those guys went super high in the draft that year, and you know, just being able to get that opportunity to represent the U.S. and go to Taiwan and Korea and see how baseball is out there and see their fans was, was amazing. Are there, are there particular people that you, that you don't know? I mean, I know you, you get to interact with Derek Lee and he was an amazing player and it must be so great to be able to get his input. Are there players though, that you don't even know that you just, you watch them play and they, and you want to emulate how they play from what you see? Yes. I got to get a little faster, but Tatis. Nice. That's my hey, you're That's shooting high. <laughs> he will always he'll go down as one of my favorite players of all time. And the crazy thing about him is he's leading the National League in home runs right now, and he probably missed about a third of the season. Yeah, which is which is unbelievable. It's unbelievable how good this guy is. It's I mean, he's on a, he's in a different different league than anybody else in the National League, except 
I know Tony likes Mookie Betts, and we all know how good he is. Yeah. He's good. It's like the Padre, even though Dodgers are my favorite team, but I love the Padre simply because he's on the team. What do you what do you like? So I mean, look, obviously there's a lot to like in how Fernando Tatis Jr. plays, but like what what is it that you see in in him playing that just, really makes you just like that's the guy? It's just exciting. Everything he does is exciting. Um the hitting, the feeling, the running. You know, sometimes the, the running ends up being a little too much and you know, I'm sure And the confidence as well. Yeah, and the confidence, the swag. Yeah. Yeah, it's all there. And playing different positions. I mean, he's been moved, I, th- I think, already three times in his career from different positions. Yeah. I mean, they've been moving him around like crazy. Yeah, um, and that's that's kind of how I am too. Like, I've always played on the left side. I didn't feel I played short and third, but realistically, the team needed me to go anywhere else. Like, I could do that. Now, too, let me ask you this: You had the opportunity of meet, meeting Derek Jeter. How, how did that go? That's that was crazy. That was crazy just because, you know, I wear number two because of him. Mm-hmm. So seeing him play as a kid and always wanted to play like him and play shortstop and wear number two and all that. And it was finally, what was that? That was summer. I think it was your junior year, maybe? Yeah, summer 2019. Yeah. Like after all those years, finally getting to be in the same dugout and asking questions and play shortstop in front of him was was crazy. And he's a tall guy. He's like your height, isn't he? Is he? He's not yeah. a. I mean, nobody knows. No one can tell. But I mean, he's like a six three, six four guy. I mean, yep. he's he's, exactly. he's not one of these small right. little uh, uh, you know guys that play the infield. He's a big dude. Now, yeah. now, Drew, on your spare time, do you ever go back and just look at old video clips on YouTube of some of the past shortstops? Because my favorite shortstop of all time is, I'm, I'm going with Ozzy Smith. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe not. Guys from the past, but I'll look at, you know, Trevor Story, Correa, Tatis, Lindor, mostly well, guys that are playing right now. Well, well do yourself a favor. Put, go to YouTube and watch a guy named Ozzy Smith. Am I right, Ross? <laughs> Defensively, probably the best shortstop to ever play the game. Best hands, most yeah. um, unbelievable defensive wise. Right. He was the best. I mean, as you know, Tony, I'm a Barry Larkin fan, so I, 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 I'm a, I'm, I love Barry Larkin. I think he's one of the best dude. But Ozzy Smith is just different level than anybody else. You're 100 percent right. Now, Drew, on your spare time, I hear, I hear you write beats, man. I do make beats. Yeah, I got into that uh, in about eighth grade, just because my brother's making music, and I was like, all right, like I want to be the same thing. Um, <laughs> And yeah, I've been doing yep. it ever since. You have a favorite artist? Favorite artist is Drake. But uh, in close second, I got, you know, like Travis Scott, Kanye. I don't know, know who that is. Those are guys. Travis he Scott, what's that? He knows who he be. So I thought he was saying he didn't know who Travis Kanye was. was. What? I was like, oh, man. <laughs> I'm old school, man. You give me like the Temptations, the OJs. I know, like 90s. Stevie Wonder. Though. Huh? I said, I like 90s R&B. 90s R&B? Yes. Oh, man. What, what are some Tell of your me. favorites? We have. We got to hear this. What are some of my favorites? Yeah, yeah from the 90s. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, too. SWV, Jodeci, Boys to Men. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, you know, this is stuff. Faith Evans. Okay. So later on, go up to Kyle and your mommy vet and tell them to introduce you to some Motown. I think oh, no, my dad has. My dad has. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's real music. Uh-huh. Like, today's music, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what they're saying. Right. <laughs> I, I like the, I hear the beat, but what are they saying? I mean, actually, like, actually, I do. I do want to ask Drew this. What I mean, when you listen to when you listen to Motown, what is it like for you? Is it just like, no, that's so far in the past or, or I don't know. Hmm. No, I mean, because I'm a big music fan. So I know, like, if it's good, like, I'm going to like it. Um but I feel like today there's a lot. I, I agree with Tony. There's a lot of music today where it's just like it's the same thing over and over again. I'm like, all right, like I don't want to hear about the club. I don't want to hear about popping bottles and calling ladies outside their names. <laughs> I, I will not turn on that kind of music. Exactly. That's just me. That's me. Exactly. You know, because first of all, I respect my mom and all women, and I don't go to clubs and I don't drink. So I rather listen to Stevie Wonder, Temptations. You know. Music like that, Michael Jackson. 
Okay, Actually, so Drew, here's the million dollar question for you. Um, we all know you're coming back to Stanford this year. You have an unbelievable season. You're you break records hitting wise, let's say, and you will. Uh, how far? How long do you stay at Stanford? When when do you come out to the draft? What what's your what's your long term plan at in college? So and, my long term yeah. plan, or for right now, would just be um, this year, and then I would have another year. Um, my junior year and then junior after that, year yeah after my junior year i'll be able to get drafted and um you know that's the goal and praying that goes well and um you know move on with my career in the minors and in the off season i'll come back to campus and train and and, and get your degree yep okay good so, Oh, that's, no, I, he's, I, I, he's I, most definitely will get his degree all right okay i don't think his mom let him in, that's the, i don't think that's his the mom thing. let him in the house that's the thing. If you graduate with just one year left, it's a lot easier to be like, fine, I'll go back and finish that. But I wanted to ask this question. I don't even know if you can answer it. You you can totally not answer it if you don't want to. But if you had your, your dream landing spot in the major leagues, what organization? You're wearing a Dodgers hat. I don't know if that's yeah. the one, but it is, is that it the would one? definitely be the Dodgers. All right. <laughs> maybe the Dodgers, but at the same time, it's like, Whichever team loves me enough to draft me and, you know, is willing just, to develop me and all that kind of stuff. Right. And just to have a career in baseball, you right. know, because, I mean, you know, there's millions of guys that have tried it. I was telling Ross, I'm like, man, just to have a career to say, hey, I play professional baseball. I don't care. I'll be honest with you. I don't care if you got one at bat and you got 8,000 at bats. You did something that millions have tried and didn't conquer. Right. So, but, and, 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 I, and I see yourself, you're on that path where, you know, you're going to be a great professional. It's my opinion. I know I, 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 I don't think I exaggerate because I've been watching you, man. And everything you do is just, you do it. You know, like I say, you're the best player on the field. And I don't have a problem telling other people that they want to debate me. I was like, debate me. But I like the way he carries himself. I mean, you're not braggadocious. You just, you just play the game like, yeah, that's me, and I love it. Right. Thank so you, you keep you keep doing you keep playing that way, man. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So, uh, let's flash forward. Let Let's say, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it so you don't have to. Let's say you make the Hall of Fame, and you're at your Hall of Fame speech. Who Who are you gonna thank? And is Tony in there? <laughs> I'm gonna put him on the spot. <laughs> Now, I'm not in there. There's no way. His mom and dad would be the first Tony's people, there. I would think, you know, <laughs> but, uh, and his brother, you know. Yeah. Family, trainers, coaches, um, just people who have been there along the way to help me, including Tony. <laughs> well, that's, that's there a, you go. I, I'll, I'll have, like, the pom-poms out there rooting, <laughs> rooting you on, man. You know, because I, 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 in my eyes, you cannot do no wrong. When you go back to school, would are you in the when 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 you go back to campus next week? Next week, yeah. So, so next week, and then and then you guys start training like as soon as you get back, correct? Yeah, I mean, yeah. We're gonna go straight at it in field and uh, probably start practice probably a couple weeks into being back. I feel like not right on the day we get back, but yeah, pretty much right away. And in my eyes, Drew, I feel I have a photo. I'm getting ready to. Our producer is going to put up here in a second. I feel one day you will win a few of these right there. Look at that yeah. photo, huh? Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, we're going. To, you know, where I do you put that least... trophy at? Where's that glove at? Is that in your room? Oh, the big one. Yeah. No, oh, Ross. I think that was theirs. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, it's theirs. That, I thought it was that. Like, a... I, I didn't know. I told asking. I, I no, that's a Rawlings thing. gold glove that they have. On the field, oh, I got every it. year at the perfect yeah. game. All copy, of copy that. Okay, uh, I apologize. I, I thought it was yeah. actually like a, a trophy for winning like the home run mini contest and hit and being the MVP. I thought it was like a trophy. The close, the closest Ross and I come to a gold glove is when we're talking to Tony and we see <laughs> that in the background. Right. <laughs> there you go. So, Drew, I just want to say thank you for coming on the show, man, and and you know, just a little advice, man. You know, you stay close to the people that have been there for you all your little league friends and, you know, your high school buddies, just stay close with all of them, man. And, uh, you know, that's because the, the people along the way, once you make it, they're going to be your friends for the wrong reasons. But at least, you know, you have these guys that you can turn to that's always been there for you. Right. All right. And just, and just stay positive, man. You know, I'm one of your biggest fans and, uh, you know, I know you know that. 
I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I, do I, know that. I you do know that. And I'm just like, so just keep well, going, brother. I will. Thank, thank you. And Drew, thank you for coming on. This is very exciting for us to talk to you because you're clearly a star in the making. You got the right mental mindset too. So I'm very excited to track your career. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Appreciate Drew, it. Thank you. Everybody, Thanks, Drew Bowser in the house. We're out. <laughs>